So how do we create very basic drawings? <laughs> well, actually, uh, if you would like to start working with the drawing, you can either load um, a paper-based scan, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, all these things you can find in the in the import. So you, sh you should go to file and you should use the import tool and, and find a format that you have the, your files in. We will cover this, uh, I believe, in the, in the yes, following the next section. Yes, going to be about uh, But uh, if you have nothing, just a plain white paper, then what, what you will do, you will just go and uh, start up ArchLine. You will see a uh, dialog coming up similar like this, and then you will click here and open up a new project. And then you can fill up the, the, the basic BIM information about this building, like the location. You can de determine where this building will be uh, on Earth. Uh, you can set up the name, uh, the designer's name, the, the project name, and, and all this information. And actually, at the end, if you uh, fill these up, you can reuse these data. You can auto semi auto fill the, the title box as well. At the end, I will show you it uh, at the documentation uh, tut tutorial or workshop, which we will do um, in a later session. So now you can actually just skip it whenever you would like to set up this data, you will be able to find it in file, BIM, and project parameters, that's the same mm -hmm. place. And then you can start working. So either you fill it up or not, you can just start working with the, with the tools. Now, if you uh, are about to draft a building, you will likely start with the walls, or sometimes you will start with drafting items uh, like like uh, 2D. I don't know. You know, you, you just would like to set up a grid or something like that. In that case, you will start with the with the drafting. But other than that, you will start with the walls. Whenever you start with a tool, any of these, the software will use the current default settings. Now, if I start the wall tool, I can see that the current default setting is that what we call the one layered 38 wide wall. Now, we are working in meters, so that means uh, this wall will be uh, 0.38 meters, 38 centimeters uh, wide. Its thickness is what, we, what you can see here as a number. And then when you would like to s create something with that, you start a tool, select this, and click somewhere and move your mouse. And I'm not holding, the, holding down the mouse wheel, I'm just moving the mouse. Uh, so you don't have to keep pushing the, uh, and dragging the, 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 the mouse cursor, you just release it and move your mouse somewhere. And then, then either you type the distance that you know, or you just you know, click somewhere and then you will have the 2D and the 3D all automatically. Mm -hmm. So this is how you can uh, create this here. Uh, also, if you would like to create something, just as I mentioned, that I know that this uh, wall uh, will be to the right and it's about, I don't know, one and a half meters, and I'm just start typing 1.5. Uh, it actually depends on how the program settings are, but by default, it accepts the dot as well. So you just type the distance and then you just keep drawing the walls. Whenever you would like to terminate a command that now I'm about to do something else, so I would like to skip drawing walls, I just hit escape and then the software goes back to the default settings. Uh, right click works as well sometimes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, right click uh, sometimes means enter. It depends on the uh, command mm -hmm. uh, itself. But escape always, always means that you would like to escape that command and you don't want to do anything with that. Uh, so this is how you can set up a simple layout of literally uh, all sort of uh, drawings. But if I would like to sketch this drawing that I have here, I actually have a building drawing, a printed copy of a building that I would like to process, then I can, I can do that as well. Or this could be something that I went on, on site and I would like to you know, just process the, the, the values that I measured at uh, the survey. So uh, either way, I can just start working with these. Now, actually, uh, to be able to remove these, uh, these two walls, it was just an uh, introductory sketch here, I can either undo these steps, keep that in mind that undo is not infinite. Undo is uh, only 32 steps, so uh, don't rely on that too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least 32 steps, you can go back and you can just undo these two, two steps as well. But also, if you would like to, you can erase these. You can just select the, uh, the walls and then you can erase these. Later, we will talk about this selection a little bit more. So I just um, keep that for later. And now I just undid these two walls and then I start working with the walls. So let's say I would like to draw a wall. And I, I know that its distance was, uh, its length, it was uh, 11.9 meters. Now, 
keep that in mind that now what you draw, the wall itself, is created by its blue line. That's the reference line. And now, based on my drawing, I would like to actually draft the top line of this wall. So you want to have the line uh, on, the, on the other side? Yeah, I would like to move it to the other side. So there are two ways to do that when you work with uh, the wall tool. Uh, one way is that, as you can see, at the right-hand side, these, uh, these sub-commands sub appear. So you can just click here and use the right-side uh, option. Or uh, other than that, you can actually use the F5 key. It's actually the it's, it's cycling through these uh, reference lines or in some case reference points later. So you just hit F5 and you move your mouse and you, you, you're gone back to the, to the initial status. Now if I hit F5 again and hold my mouse, move a little bit. Now I'm at the center. F5, move the mouse, now I'm at the bottom. So, so this way you can cycle through. And this is very handy because you can, you can do this all, all along, when you, when you draw continuously, you can just cycle through this because you know layouts are, are sometimes pretty complex and so it's necessary you have to do. To toggle between them pretty fast. Huh? Yes, 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 that's right. So uh, let me just quickly sketch this, and uh, I'll let you talk about other possibilities how you, you can draft um, to the layouts or, or actually drawings. Okay. Okay. One one thing that you that you skipped <coughs> in the beginning, and we are going to cover that later on, is that on the left hand side, uh, you remember that Elias mentioned that that was uh, that was one. You can continue and yeah. I'll cover this. So you can you can choose the the uh, the wall type you want to work with. Now this is very important that you can set up different styles. We will talk about how that works, but only uh, only thing you have to know at this point is that this is not this is an, um, a, a, an in, not an infinite list, of course. You can choose from the presets, but you can make your own as well. Yeah. This could be <laughs> composite walls, different different layers, structures, different height values. So that all depends on what you actually want to work with. But these are the things that you can set up, and most importantly, you can uh, carry this to another computer if you want to change your change your workstation. One thing that the reason why you stopped here is that there's a very important thing that we have to illustrate, which is very familiar for CAD users. If you want to finish your drawing, you can also you can obviously add the number if you know that. But if you don't know that, you can uh, copy the nodes. You can uh, snap to nodes what you see on the drawing. So what happens now is that we are snapping to the to the wall which is just below this one, and we just hit uh, we just click and and we're done with that. And we we can finish the drawing like that, but we can also hit an enter and to to close the polygon, right? Yeah. Well, actually, if I just would hit enter here, I wouldn't have this this wall mm -hmm. here. And the reason I did not connect these two that uh, sometimes uh, you will create drawing parts that either intentionally or unintentionally uh, they are not connected. Whenever you do that, and you would like to, and you change your mind, and you would like to ch click them and connect them later, you should just use these two commands. This is the L connection and the and the T connection. This works very well uh, when you would like to connect these two items. Now, talking about the, this layout, this is kind of um, um, uh, a basic layout of Arshline, and it's I think it's very handy. You can work with this split screen view, and you can see what happens on the 2D, and uh, parallelly you can follow the changes in the 3D. And also, if you'd like to uh, swap the drawings in this split lay, uh, layout, you should use this uh, tool here. This is the Magnify Window tool. If I click into the 3D, making it active, it's blue, like blue now, it's the active drawing, and I click here, then Archline swaps the drawing. So if I do it again, I click here, and I swap the drawings. So this is how you uh, swap the drawings, the active drawings. You can actually uh, enlarge this whole uh, drawing by clicking here and making it full screen. And then you can use it uh, in a full screen style using the, only the project navigator navigate through uh, the contents. But at any time, if you'd like to go back to the split screen view, you should just use this and then you are back to the default the layout. The main reason why you would use parallel to each other the 2D and the 3D <coughs> is because most things you can do in, in either. There are, some, there are some actions which are more convenient in, in any of these viewports, but uh, usually you would use two of them simultaneously. Yes, yes, yes. So now I actually, I will use the 3D layout to control what happens in the 2D, to see the changes. And before I do that, let me just quickly uh, tell you one more uh, difference here in the 3D compared to the 2D, how you can handle it. Because of course, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can pan this content, and of course you can rotate it. Now, if you would like to rotate this, you can you would like to orbit around your model, then you should hold the shift key and the mouse wheel and move the mouse. So this is how you. I'm I'm 
I'm holding the shift key and the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. This is how you can rotate the model freely all around. And then again, you can just double click with the mouse wheel to make it you know, appear uh, fitting the screen.